I've been covering the border for for years. Mm -hmm. And so I know this is not a problem that started with your administration. Correct, correct. But there was an historic flood of undocumented immigrants coming across the border the first three years of your administration. As a matter of fact, arrivals quadrupled from the last year of President Trump. Was it a mistake to loosen the immigration policies as much as you did? a long-standing problem and solutions are at hand and from day one literally we have been offering solutions what I was asking was was it a mistake to kind of allow that flood to happen in the first place I think the policies that we have been proposing are about fixing a problem not promoting a problem Okay, but, but the numbers the, did quadruple and the numbers your, today because of what we have done We have cut the flow of illegal immigration by half should you We have, have done cut that? the should flow of fentanyl that? by half But we need Congress to be able to act to actually fix the problem
To the US now, Democratic presidential nominee Kamala Harris has agreed to a number of interviews this week. After months of avoiding journalists, she sat down for a 40 minute interview on a popular podcast called Call Her Daddy to appeal to Gen Z voters. Our Washington correspondent Annalise Nielsen has been out talking to Gen Z voters in the battleground state of Arizona. When Joe Biden won the election in 2020, a major reason was turnout. Donald Trump had essentially the same number of people vote for him in 2016 as they did in 2020, but Joe Biden had more, with a record 81 million ballots cast for him. So the question is, can Kamala Harris recreate that this election? To do that, she needs young voters to turn out, and that's why so much of her approach has been to appeal to Gen Z voters, in particular with the interviews that she's granting. She's done one with a podcast, a very popular podcast, especially among young women, called Call Her Daddy. This has been somewhat controversial. It's not the normal approach for politicians to reach out to people during elections, but she spoke for almost 40 minutes about the right to access abortion in America, which is a topic that generally appeals to young voters. At a rally in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. former President Trump recently told women, you will be protected and I will be your protector. What do you make of that? So he who, when he was president, hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade, and they did just as he intended, and there are now 20 states with Trump abortion bans. We've been on campus here today at Arizona State University. Now, this is a major campus in an important swing state that, if Donald Trump wins, will give him a clear path to the presidency this time around. For those we've been speaking to who are reaching out to encourage young people to vote, they say registration has been high. Turnout was really high in 2020. I think it was one of the highest ever. So I think it's just going to be a little higher. But uh, I mean, I feel like every student we've asked has said they're registered to vote. So I don't know if they're lying, but it sounds like a lot of them are. Well, we table next to like Student for Harris groups sometimes. And the other day there was like a big like Frats for Trump thing going on here as well. So we see both sides a lot. Uh, very common as well here. Yeah. For many of the young people who would talk to us on campus, they don't seem particularly engaged in the upcoming election. I don't really listen to many podcasts, especially when they get political. What do you think of Kamala Harris? Um, I don't know. I don't really have much input on her. I don't, I don't really like her that much now. I, I don't know that much about her, honestly, so I, I can't, like, I don't have, like, super strong opinions about it. But uh, just, like, the, some of the policies that she talks about, they're not, like, I don't, I don't think they're good for America. Yeah. But from the things I have seen, she seems like she's a pretty fit, fitting president. But, yeah. And so are you planning to vote? If I'm able to, I'll try, yeah. I would like to, being that this would be my first election I'd be able to vote in, but I'm not sure if I can make that happen. What do you think of Donald Trump? I think he's better. Um, I don't know that much about him, too, though. But if I had to, like, choose one, I'd, I'd vote for Trump. Voters here in Arizona will be able to cast their ballot for president this week. And like the other swing states we've traveled to, it seems like the result will be very tight. Annalise Nielsen, Sky News in Phoenix, Arizona.